Good morning to all. Today's topic is on root deprivation. Learning outcomes are elaborate on the depression layer for root planing. Choose the instruments required for root planing procedure. Explain the technique of root planing. Explain the concept of full mouth disinfection in periodontal treatment. Introduction Non surgical therapy aims to eliminate both living bacteria in the microbial biofilm and calcified biofilm microorganisms from the tooth surface and the adjacent soft tissues. So, removal of dental plaque and calculus on the root surface inside the periodontal pocket in order to get rid of the bacteria that causes periodontal diseases. So, scaling and root planing considered to be the gold standard of periodontal therapy. It helps in reduction of the inflammation of the periodontium due to lesser bacterial load which leads to beneficial clinical changes. So, sometimes the scaling will not be enough to take care of the periodontal tissues. So, coming to the definition of root planing. And also, what is root debridement? Is it the same? Both root planing and root debridement are same or is it different? Okay, so coming to the details of this. What is root planing? That is a process by which residual embedded calculus and portions of cementum are removed from the roots to produce a smooth, hard and clean surface. So previously, the term curettage was used and later it changed to root planing. So then it is it has been changed to root surface debridement. So how it is different from root planing? So the debridement, what is debridement? There is a debridement of the root surface with only few strokes and not to undertake aggressive instrumentation to remove the endotoxin and other root surface irregularities. So we will not be purposely removing the surface of the cementum. That is what we are telling here. The portions of cementum will not be removed in root debridement. It is just the removal of plaque and calculus and there won't be removal of the tooth surface. Okay. So this will be clear by the following details. That is, the stem has appeared recently in the literature to better describe periodontal instrumentation associated with periodontal therapy. There is a treatment of gingival and periodontal inflammation through mechanical removal of tooth and root surface irritants to the extent the adjacent soft tissues maintain or return to a healthy non-inflamed state. So the all the irritants, that is all the local factors will be removed from the tooth and the root surface. Okay. And which is necessary to get the healthy non-inflamed state. So that, that is why this root debridement may therefore be defined as the removal of plaque and calculus from the root surface without the in, uh, intentional removal of tooth structure. So coming to the differences of root planing and root debridement. So when we differ root planing and root, root debridement, these are the points. That is under root planing, there is a removal of calculus from all tooth surfaces and removal of cementum from root surfaces. Whereas root debridement, there is a removal of plaque biofilms and calculus from all tooth surfaces and within the pocket space. Okay. And here it will, there will be aggressive instrumentation which removes some amount of cementum also. But here there will be conservation of cementum. That will be the goal. The goal will be only the removal of bacterial products. So that will be with ultrasonic instruments or light instrumentation strokes. And root planing mostly with the hand activated instrumentation whereas root debridement will be a combination of hand activated instruments and the ultrasonic instrumentation. Another important distinction between root planing and debridement is that debridement relies on objective measures of tissue response as opposed to the subjective measure of root surface smoothness associated with the root planing. The goal of debridement therapy is to stop disease progress and to re-establish periodontal health. The goal of debridement therapy goes beyond the root surfaces to the oral health of the patient. So, debridement therapy deals with the control of bacterial infection rather than the narrow focus of root surface smoothness. So, in the 1980s, this concept of SRP was uh, questioned because of several in vitro studies. They showed that biofilm was superficially located on the root surface and its disruption and the removal could be easily be attained by ultrasonic instrumentation of the root surface. So why? Why there is a need of root planing or root surface debridement? So mainly due to the changes in the root surface in periodontitis. Especially with the primary etiological factors that is the plaque and calculus deposition. 
which leads to alterations in exposed cement dam. There is there will be root surface changes, there is structural changes, there is presence of pathology granules, areas of increased mineralization, areas of demineralization, whereas chemical changes uh, that is the mineral content of exposed cementum, uh, that is mineral increased minerals uh, minerals in the root surfaces, then the cytotoxic changes like the bacterial penetration in the cementum can be found as deep and the products such as endotoxins can also be detected. So what is the rationale for root planing? The goal always has been to achieve smooth glassy surfaces to attain the restoration of gingival health. And this can be attained by illuminating the roughness and resorption defects of the two root surface. So root surface of calculus does not itself induce inflammation, but the deleterious effects of calculus relate to its ability to provide an ideal surface for microbial colonization. So that is why there is a need of the removal of roughness and resorption defects of the root surface. Then coming to the next point, that is to remove the contaminated cementum by the endotoxins of periodontal pathogens. So when the root surface is exposed to plaque and pla pocket environment, its surfaces will be contaminated by toxic substances, notably endotoxins. So when the dentin is exposed, that may invade the dental tubules. So scaling alone will be insufficient to remove. So the portion of root surface must be removed to eliminate them. So that is the next, the second rational layer for root planing and the third one that is to create a layer of organi organic and mineralized tooth surface. So all these cytotoxic changes will be removed from the root surface so they can create a layer of organic and mineralized tooth surface. And the fourth point that is always by removal of all these uh, root surface changes from the tooth so it can uh, lead to new attachment that is healing will be better. So that is to promote adequate periodontal healing. So what are the objectives for root planing? Suppression or elimination of the pathogenic periodontal microflora and replacement with the space flora found in health and conversion of inflamed bleeding or separatory pathologic pockets to healthy gingival sulcus, shrinking of the deepened pathologic pocket to a shallow healthy gingival sulcus, Providing a root surface compatible with re-establishment of a healthy conti tissue and epithelial attachment. So coming to the detection of dental calculus. So that you know that always the substantial calculus will be very hard to detect as it is not visible clinically. So this can be identified by conventional techniques as well as with the advanced techniques. So always these conventional techniques include that is by the careful probing that is by the tactile sensation and by the radiographs and also by the compressed air and also coming to the advanced techniques you can just note down some of the technologies there is the fiber optic endoscopy and ultrasound laser and autofluorescence so then coming to the instruments for root planing so curates are the instruments used for root planing so the working end of end is a spoon shaped blade which has two curved cutting edges you can see that this is the curette you can see that this is the cutting edges and this is the face and this is the toe back surface and this is the lateral surface okay so this will be spoon shaped with the two curved cutting edges so this two cutting edges will be bounded will be joined by a rounded toe you can see that this is the rounded toe Okay, so there are two types that is universal curates and area specific. So under area specific curates, we have nine types of traditional Gracie curates. That is one Gracie one two, Gracie three four, Gracie five six, seven eight, nine ten. So they are specifically known for specific areas. So that is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15, 16, the modification for uh, 11, 12 and in the 17, 18 modification for 13, 14. So coming to the differences between Gracie curates and Universal curates. 
according to area of use this area gracie curis is being designed for specific areas and universal curis curit is designed for all areas and surfaces so coming to the cutting edge we have only one cutting edge in case of gracie curit you can see in this picture that this is the outer cutting edge this being used and for the universal curette we have two cutting edges you can see that both cutting edges and this will work with either only and the curvature it is curved in two planes in case of gracie curess there is blade curves up and to the sides so it is curved in two planes whereas the universal curette it is curved in one plane that is this blade curves up not to the sides okay so then coming to the blade angle that is usually it has the offset blade that is the face of the blade will be beveled at 60 degrees 60 to 70 degrees you can see that this is the with the face of the blade and then coming to the universal uh, curette it has no not offset blade that is the face of the blade is at 90 degree to the shank so this is the 90 degree to the shank okay and and also this universal curette is mainly used for light subgingival treatment whereas gracie curette is for deep subgingival treatment so coming to uh, the modifications of curettes we have mentioned some of the modifications of curettes we have more mod modified curettes are there so the most important few we have added that is langa curettes there is a modified set of three curettes that is a combination of gracie 5 6 11 12 and 13 14 so this gracie shank design enables improved access to the difficult areas so there is universal uh, blade angulation 90 degree to the shank that is enables use of both cutting edges and which allows adaptation to both nasal and distal without changing the end instrument so this is a modified set of three curettes that is with along with the uh, universal uh, blade angulation so this is more enables more improved access to the difficult areas so coming to the after five curettes there is a modified version of standard gracie that is a terminal shank is 3 mm longer and will be larger in diameter and will be more tapered so this thinner blade always enables more smooth subgingival insertion and less tissue distension okay then coming to the mini five curettes there is a modification for the after five curettes it is improved insertion and adaptation in deep narrow pockets furcations grooves line angles so it is shorter blade half the length of the after five so it is compared to the blade size mini five will be blade size will be shorter so it is available in both shiny uh, finishing and rigid design uh, and this finishing design recommended only for very light instrumentation okay there is also one of the modifications and the other one is gracie curvets there is a increase upward curvature and this enables closer um, blade adaptation so the question will be increase potential for root gouging will be there so this Uh, we have to take care of it and shorter blade than traditional gracie like as mini uh, fixes so, so that is the advantage of gracie curve so coming to the technique of root planing so as you know subgingival calculus is harder than suprasubgingival calculus due to its close adaptation to the cement around the root surface so we should rely heavily on tactile sensitivity because the vision will be obscured by bleeding So after anesthesia has been administered and before root instrumentation occurs the periodontal pocket should be thoroughly probed for subgingival calculus and for any root surface concavities or any developmental grooves paratogingival grooves for any furcation invasions on probing pocket depths So for the instrumentation instrument should be closely adapted to the root surface so it should be closely adapted and the tip place the tip third or half of the cutting edge of a gracie curette against the tooth surface so the larger outer curve for if you are using gracie curette the larger outer curve is always the cutting edge okay the working end of the curette is inserted into the periodontal pocket with zero degree angulation and always as you know a modified pen grasp with an appropriate finger rest will allow to keep the lower shank parallel to the long axis of the tooth surface so an angulation of 60 to 80 degree will be established for root planing by the curette face and the root surface and for calculus rem removal always we should apply moderate pressure moderate and for root planing 
and we have we should use light lateral pressure and that we should activate the curet by using vertical diagonal or horizontal pull strokes so coming to the diagrammatic representation of row planing procedure you can see that picture a shows the curet will be inserted with the face of the blade against the tooth with zero degree angulation you can see that there is a first picture and second picture that shows there is a working angulation that is between the 45 to 90 degree, ideally speaking, 60 to 80 degree will be established at the base of this pocket. And the lateral pressure will be applied. That is very light pressure. If you are going for root planing, there is a very light pressure will be applied. There is a pull stroke, root planing stroke will be activated in a coronal direction. Coming to the evaluation after root planing, the ultimate evaluation will be based on tissue response. So ideally speaking, the clinical evaluation of the soft tissue response to scaling and root planing, including probing, should not be conducted earlier than two weeks postoperatively. So during the first to two weeks after root planing, there will be resolution of edema, shrinkage of gingival margin, color is about normal, moderate pocket depth may be present, but there is lack little or no bleeding from the base of the pocket when probed, histological epithelialization is about to complete. And two to three weeks after opening, the color will be normal, consistency will be firm. So no bleeding, uh, no bleeding from base of the pocket, tooth mobility may decrease. So these are the expected outcomes during one to two weeks after root planing and after two to three weeks after root planing. So when we discussed about the evaluation after root planing, we surely need to know the healing procedures after scaling and root planing. So within few hours, an acute inflammatory reaction occurs in the soft tissue pocket wall. And within two days, you can see that the remnants of pocket epithelium will get proliferated and the pocket wall will be fully epithelized. So this involution of pocket epithelium will give rise to junctional epithelium. And in 14 days, this epithelial reattachment is complete and new gingival sulcus will be formed. At this, uh, at this time, sometimes you can see the gingival recession will be there following the reversal of inflammatory swelling. So at 3 to 6 weeks, you can see that formation of functionally oriented collagen takes place to replace the granulation tissue. After 6 weeks, the maturation of the conti tissue component may continue for several months. So, when we, when we are speaking about the summary, we can tell that restoration and the epithelization of sulcus will be the epithelization will take place within 2 to 7 days. Okay. And the restoration of junctional epithelium within 5 days. And immature collagen formation will be within 21 days. So, healing is mostly by long junctional epithelium with islands of connective tissue attachment. So this conti tissue maturation always this will be continued between 21 to 28 days. So final gingival contouring may not be seen for another 3 to 6 months. Okay. So coming to a short brief on full mouth disinfection. So coming to the introductory part. So what is full mouth disinfection? This is an alternate approach to treat the whole mouth within 24 hours in one or two, two sessions, which includes full mouth scaling. So when an antiseptic agent like lorexidin, if it is added to full mouth uh, scaling, then the intervention is called as full mouth disinfection. Okay. The rationale for using this full mouth approaches is to reduce the likelihood of reinfection in already treated sites. So what is the background for this? That is in periodontitis patient, as you know, there are several pathogenic microorganisms. So these have been found to spread subgingivally. So always there is a chance of intraoral translocation from one night to another, that is including at sites without clinical loss of periodontal attachment. So the main source of uh, this vehicle of transmission will be saliva. So this has been found out by Kurnin in 1996. So what is full mouth disinfection? So when you describe the definition, it is a one stage full mouth disinfection obtained by performing all scaling and root planing within 24 hours together with repeated application of chlorhexidine to all intraoral nights. Okay, so that is the definition. 
so the in order to reduce the chance for a such a bacterial translocation and thereby prevent a reinfection by peritoneal pathogens of per previously root plane pockets is one stage full mouth disinfection will be done that is will be performing all the scaling and root planing within 24 hours with the repeated application of chlorhexidine okay so this was described by Kiran in 1995 with the, with the intention of performing scaling and root planing in one or two visits in a 24 hour hour range okay so the main rationale we are telling that is to avoid the possibility of cross contamination between treated and untreated quadrants so what are the advantages of this full mouth disinfections? So that is the reduced probability of an intraoral transmission, a more efficient way of delivering treatment, fewer treatment sessions and lower cost. Well, then coming to the disadvantages that is carrying out all the treatment over two or three, two sessions does not provide as frequent opportunities for patient motivation and oral hygiene monitoring as well. And some patients also find it difficult to tolerate the long appointments necessary for full mouth procedures. And then also multiple separate review appointments may not always be possible with this full mouth disinfection. So how the procedure is being done? There is a full mouth disinfection is performed with mechanical uh, scaling or root cleaning or with the ultrasonic debridement. So this will take approximately one hour for each quadrant. Okay, so after instrumentation, there is optimal disinfection will be done by first brushing the back of the tongue for 60 seconds with the 1% chlorhexidine gel. Afterwards, two rinses are made with 0.2% chlorhexidine solution for one minute. Okay, and this gargling will be done during the last 10 seconds to reach the tonsils also. So, gargling also will be done along with the rinses. Okay, subsequently, subgingival irrigation of all the periodontal pockets will be performed for 10 minutes in three intervals, that is, with a 1% chlorhexidine gel. So, this step will be repeated every eight days after the is repeated eight days after the intervention. So, additionally, these patients are instructed to use the mouthwash twice daily for at least two weeks. Okay. Then oral hygiene instructions will be given including intradental plaque control with intradental brushes or toothpicks and brushing the back of the tongue twice a day. Okay. So, this is the full mouth description procedures. So, there will be some variations uh, have been evolved in uh, various uh, aspects that is full mouth treatment with chlorhexidine. They have changed into full mouth treatment without chlorhexidine uh, and they have used povidone iodine instead of chlorhexidine and the uh, extension of hygiene methods and increase in the duration of post treatment use they have used and the replacement that is what I told before that is replacement of chlorhexidine with other antiseptics and they have used antibiotics that is with the amoxicillin and metronidazole combination and they have used probiotics with this and also photodynamic therapy with it and also one stage full mouth disinfection with the periodontal testing. So, these are some of the variations uh, to the uh, regular full mouth disinfection procedures. So, coming to the conclusion that is full mouth uh, disinfection is an option to perform non-surgical treatment in a shorter time of uh, period and also this uh, there is, is a treatment without risk to the patient may be more comfortable when they have no dis time disposal for four visits uh, or in four to six weeks lapse of time and the results are those uh, like that so when you compare with the traditional treatment always uh, there is no significant uh, variation clinical or microbiology changes but always it's been uh, beneficial in case of uh, benef aggressive periodontitis and also this can be a good option to treat these type of patients okay so that's all for today thank you